Hello everyone and welcome to the 3D Printing Systems YouTube channel. My name is Brandon and today we're going to be covering the topic of 3D scanning for the purposes of creating a profile for a floor. Specifically, we're going to be doing the profile of a boat floor. Uh, the reason for this is that it is an ever-growing need where people and businesses alike need to be able to create a profile of the floor of their boat to be able to replace the flooring that is on it. We're going to go head out to a local boat shop uh, called Family Boats. They've been kind enough to let us come there and film for a bit. So we're going to head there now and I will meet you there. Hey guys, it's uh, Bruce here from 3D Printing Systems. And Brandon. And today we're going to be doing a webinar on boat floor scanning. Uh, Bruce, why are we doing this? Uh, I don't know, Brandon. I, I thought it was just <laughs> something nice to come and see some really <laughs> fancy luxury boats. Um, we're very fortunate family boats uh, allowed us to come see this um, and scan some of the, the parts on the boats and we'll provide them with the data afterwards and they can use that to, to, to recreate different objects. Right, so yeah, I mean, the big thing that we're trying to accomplish today is to get the profile of the floor of this boat specifically. Um, I think it's quite a growing need uh, to get the profiles of floors for boats specifically, and uh, yeah, why why is that? I mean, you know, uh, I think, you know, 3D scanning can be quite challenging, yeah. and I think it's, we need to educate people on how, what are the best techniques on doing it, what are the different uh, uh, scanners to use to do that. So today we've got the Libra. Uh, this is a new scanner out of Shining 3D, nice big screen on the back, and it's got three different modes. So, we're going to have a look at those modes today. Yep, and I think it's worth mentioning with the Libra being wireless for anyone who is going out to a harbour or wherever to go and do exactly this, it's kind of perfect. You don't need a laptop, you don't need power, you can probably do it on the water if you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, and my laptop is not a good swimmer either. So. <laughs> <laughs> All okay, right. so what are we, okay, so let's just review. We, we've got these, uh, what have you got here? We've got these so, markers. Yep, so what we've got here is these are markers on a clear plastic sheet. We're going to be using these over the entire floor of the boat. Uh, this is going to be to give the scanner more references to work off of. We're lucky today that this boat does have flooring that's got some colors and some textures and features going on but a lot of the time it's just a very flat surface so when there's a flat surface like that it creates problems for the scanner it's not impossible but this way we don't have to spend an hour or two putting stickers down we can pop these sheets down and get going and be done pretty quickly yeah i mean i've done car scans before and put stickers on the car and it takes me longer to put stickers these markers on the on the vehicle than yep. it does actually scanning so this is genius actually I really like it. And even know. when I'm putting the stickers on, often it takes longer to get them off again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They stick, uh, they, yeah, you can't get those off. So we're going to use this because also this is reusable. But, we don't but have to hold throw on, them away. Brandon, I, I thought the scanner is, uh, you know, you can do without markerless, scanning. markerless. Yeah. So we can, but like I said, when it's a very flat surface, so we're going to try replicate if this, this boat had no flooring. So if that was the case, it would be a completely smooth white surface and it just makes it extremely difficult for any markerless scanner to capture any data when every part of the floor looks exactly the same. Yeah, and I think it's also important, I guess, in you know, some um, boat flooring, you'd, you'd wanna make sure that when you cut this, that this back left uh, section over here and the front right section all kind of lines up. Yep. So once you put your pieces together, it's like a jigsaw puzzle, but it's, it's accurate across the whole boat, yep. not just in a certain area. I mean, the better the scan, the better the end product. Yeah. Okay, so let's get started. What's the first thing we're going to do? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to be using our scale bar here, which comes with the Libra. We're going to be using this in conjunction with our markers. We're going to lay them out over the floor and we're going to create a global marker file first. Okay, so what can I do? Right, pop that wherever you feel fit and I'm just going to walk around and pop these down. We don't need them absolutely everywhere, but the more information we give the scanner, the better. Yeah, that might be a good spot for it. So these are just placed down in kind of like a random uh, placement as such. Um, like you said, so these are just going to create like a mathematical uh, coordinate system for, for scanning. Um, that is so easy. I mean, in the past, I've had to like put markers on and it just takes forever. But this is a genius little idea, this. And okay. just like that, I'm pretty much done. So, so this is going to generate a, um, a create a um, 
it feels like we're on the ocean and everything's moving at the moment. <laughs> um, um, it's just going to create a datum of, of points. Okay. So I might get you to put that by your feet when you move. And I think we're pretty much covered. Okay, I'm going to jump out of the way. That's perfect. The first thing I'm going to be doing is getting a global marker file. Using the markers that we've laid down on the floor here, we're going to generate a file that just picks up the markers, doesn't pick up the floor or anything else. Use that file to then scan the entire floor. So I'm going to hit start here, and we're going to get going. Okay, so those red dots are what it's currently seeing. That's correct. So. You'll see it's not picking up the floor at all. I'm just gonna go this way, so I'm not turning my back to you. Just get all these markers that we've got on the floor here and just make my way through the boat. That's really fast. I mean, that's like, it's picking up the positions of those markers. It would be faster if I had eyes in the back of my head. And <laughs> <laughs> You're having to walk backwards. <laughs> all right, and I'm just gonna go one more through just to make sure I haven't missed any. I think that's all of them though. All right, so what we've got here is just a bunch of dots and that is effectively our markers. So I've just captured all the markers throughout the entire boat. And now we're gonna use these markers to create a scan of the actual floor of the boat. So what you're gonna do, you can start anywhere on the floor and it's gonna basically stitch that data to the location wherever you start. Correct, correct. Yeah. So that's, gonna... that's a pretty good workflow of you know, that took you like a couple of minutes to do. Yep, no, very, very quick. And the scanning portion won't be much longer. Obviously, I'll be a little bit more oriented on making sure I've got everything I need, but it shouldn't shouldn't be long at all. And then we can actually take this back to the office and, you know, process give the ladies and gentlemen their boat back yep. and we can process it all, all on our own. Okay, so what mode are you using now? So this is still the IR adaptive, but we're in the second phase now where we use the markers to capture data. So okay. I'm gonna start, I think I'll start here in the middle and just work my way out. And this is using infrared light. I can see it's projecting a green like laser border Correct. around the scanning area. I'll move my feet out the way. <laughs> yeah, my feet are actually also in the way. All right. That's quite a big uh, volume. Yeah, no, so the IR mode does does get through a lot of data. So where it's uh, where it's showing up blue is that where it's got complete data then? Yep. So yellow is the scanner is basically telling us that it needs more data. Uh, blue it's effectively telling us that it's got enough. So we just need to basically go make sure everything turns blue, and I need to make sure I don't get my toes in the scan. I mean, this, this boat's already got flooring on it, so I mean, obviously we're doing the unnecessary here, but it, it, it kind of gives the, the same workflow, same principle of what you would have to do to capture flooring in a boat. I mean, normally on a, on a new boat build, you wouldn't have, you know, you would have a lot of the stuff out of here. It wouldn't be so crowded. Yeah, that's true. So you'd have more access. So the scan is just, uh, you know, this is the nice thing, not having to deal with a laptop and wires and everything. You can just move around freely without any, any issues of um, getting your laptop caught up or things like that. I mean, we can capture the, the measurements of this, uh, this area. So that's the scan, took us about, what, five minutes? Yep, if that. It's five minutes to do. Uh, here we can see the data, and that's the matching data under there. Uh, that far left corner, we haven't, there's a seat there, so we can't really get underneath that, but we've got we some of try the data. We did yep. 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 And you can even see here, it's picked up a lot of the, the patterns. Obviously, yep. if, you, if you're doing a boat from scratch, you're not gonna have any of that, but because of the markers that we put down, we're not relying on those patterns that we've got on the floor to generate the scan, we're relying on the markers. So, yep, this will be more than enough to be able to draw a complete boundary to be able to create flooring like what you see in here already. Um, so now that we've got this data, we can take this back to the office and do what we need to do with it. Yeah, so I mean, really what we're trying to do here is uh, create a, a profile, uh, you know, a profile of the flooring um, so we can create custom mats. Now this, this might apply to 
uh, you might have a van. Van, like cars, wanna, you wanna whatever. You want panels on. Yep. Uh, it, it's about how do we take, use a 3D scanner to export that profile and get to the DXF. So we're going to pack up here. We're going to head over to the office and now we're going to, then we're going to load it in and, um, you know, process the file. And we'll see you guys back at the office. See you shortly. So now that we're back at the office, we're going to import the scan into X model. As you'll see here, I've already just cut a little bit of the scan data out because we don't need much of the side walls and we just need the floor itself. I just thought I would cut some of it out just so that it's easier to demonstrate to you what we're going to be doing. So first things first, often when you 3D scan something, it kind of sits in space at a bit of an angle and doesn't have a fixed alignment to any set of axes. So using some planes and some feature recognition using the floor here, I'm going to generate a plane along the floor to be able to tell the software what is up, what is down, what is sideways, etc, etc. So once we have the part aligned to our world axes, it's a little bit easier for us to kind of orientate around it. And the first thing we're going to do is just generate a second plane that we can actually project a sketch onto. And we can do this in a couple different ways, depending on the level of detail that we are after. We can do a stacked profile selection where we can select how many planes cut through our part generating profiles. And we can stack them on top of each other to build a very complete and detailed profile of the entire part. Otherwise, we can also just create a cut through plane. So effectively, wherever the plane goes through the part itself, it will generate a line. And lastly, what we're probably going to be using in this case is to create a, an outside outline. Um, and we're going to use this feature to project the outer profile, which we can select based on where our plane is, onto a 2D sketch, and then generate the sketch into something that we can pull into a CAD file. So if you've decided that you actually want to do most of the CAD from within Xmodel itself, rather than exporting a very rough profile into your chosen CAD program, there is a way to do this as well. So using the 3D sketch function, we can actually go snap onto the nodes of the mesh and create a 3D sketch that locks onto the mesh itself. By sketching away around this, we can actually generate a surface fill to follow the surface of this part. Once we've got that, we project our sketch onto a plane and extrude a surface from it. Using both of these surfaces, we make a surface trim to create a perfect replica of the part and can simply flatten it after this using the flatten function. It's that easy. And that is a very brief summary of our workflow for scanning boat floors. If you have any questions, please feel free to check us out online. Our website is 3dprintingsystems.com. On our website, you'll also find a form that you can fill out should you request a demo with us. We can talk you through different scanner options, how to implement your scanners, and there's also a phone number. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us. Thank you so much for watching this video, and we will see you very soon.